Hello, welcome back again. This is Chris Richter and from Ricochet and we're looking at Moodle 5.0 and in this video we're going to look at the process of installing Moodle uh, on a laptop. Quite simply so that you can have a go at um, testing Moodle out, see what it's like, see what the latest version is. So we're going to use MAMP Pro as this installation as well. But we'll, I'll take you step by step through and we'll go through how to get it all installed and running. So first of all, Moodle 5.0, we go to Moodle or download.moodle.org and go and download Moodle 5.0. You'll see that there's a couple of versions. There is the 5.0 plus stable, which is the, the one updated with new fixes and things. But I'm going to go with the Moodle 5.0 as it is latest official release, uh, just so that there isn't any little surprises. So let's go and do that. We'll download the package, which is quite simple. Just hit download and I've chosen the zip file, but either package is completely fine for you. It's all good. Once it's downloaded, then we will go through the process of setting up the web server. And like I said, we're going to use Mount Pro for that. In fact, while it's downloading, we can jump into Mount Pro and have a bit of a look, see what we need to set up in Mount Pro. So Mount Pro is quite simple. It, um, it runs on a Mac, which is awesome. All we need to do is go down to the plus right down the bottom and create a new site. So we'll do that and we'll call the new site Moodle 5.0 for Moodle 5.0 and then we just need to choose a folder where Moodle will get stored and I have a sites folder where all of my sites live anyway so that's where I'll put that. So you can see I've got a brand new folder Moodle 5.0 so we'll click open for that and then choose create site. And that's all we need to do for the first part of it. So there's Moodle 5.0 just there. We do need to make sure that we have all the right important criteria though before we go any further so let's just go and check. If we go and search in Moodle for the requirements, you'll see here in the Moodle 5.0 requirements that we have uh, upgrading from Moodle 4.23 or later. Well, we're doing a straight install. We're not doing an upgrade, so that's OK. We need to have PHP 8.2 or higher. Let's just check each thing. Here we go. 8.2. We've got up to 8.4. So 8.2.26 is completely fine. Now, that's with the latest version of Mount Pro, so make sure you've got that. Jump back again. Uh, we need the extension Sodium, which we'll check that as we go. We need to update the max input vars as well. I'll show you how to do that. Everything else down here. Oh, here we go. PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariahDB, or Microsoft SQL Server. So we need to choose which one of those we've got. Now I've got PostgreSQL on here. So that's the one I'll use, and it's version 14. If you've got MySQL, you need to make sure it's 8.4 now, just a warning. If you are wanting to use MAMP, Pro, which includes MySQL, you will find that the version here, it's only to MySQL 8.0. We need it to 8.4, so you can't use that, which is the reason why I'm using PostgreSQL instead. All right, and everything else should be fine, so let's go through the rest of the steps. Now we've downloaded the package, we go and put that inside the folder that we set up for Moodle 5.0 just here. So where we chose that folder there, that's where I'm putting it. If I open up that folder, I can then go and drop that file into the folder. So I'll show you that part. So I've got the Moodle 5.0 folder here. I'm just going to remove that index file, which uh, Mount Pro put in there kindly for us. I'm going to unzip the Moodle 5.0 file or folder. It'll open up in a Moodle folder. So we're going to move that up on folder in a sec. But let's just unzip it first. OK, that's been unzipped. I'll just get rid of the Moodle 5.0. We'll go in and grab all these files here. And I just want to move them to the folder above. So I'll grab all of those and just drop them in the Moodle folder above. There it is. And we can now get rid of the Moodle folder that was there from the zip file. OK, let's change that to a list view. So we've got everything all sorted in there, ready to go. Uh, we don't have the database yet. So we now need to go in and create the database. So for the database, I'm using PostgreSQL, which I've set up here with PG Admin 4. I'm going to install a new database. So we're just going to create database and we'll just call it Moodle 5.0, which is fine. And everything else we can just click save for that and it's created a Moodle 5.0 database, which is perfect. All right, let's jump back again. Let's jump back to Mount Pro, and we've now got our web server set up. We've got a database created and set up. We're just going to go open to open up the website, and perfect. 
it says it's in English, which is what we want for this one. We then need to tell it where we're going to store everything. So I'm going to store everything in a folder called Moodle Data 5.0, just because I like to keep the data directory separate. The data directory is where it stores all of the other files, so student uploaded files and the cache and all sorts of other things, or cache if you call it that. By the way, that's where it's going to live. And our Moodle directory is just there, so that's all good. We just go next. We need to choose what type of database we're using, which is there. Then we need to fill in the database name, which we call it Moodle 5.0. The user, in my case, it should be the default. User and password, and everything will stay the same, and we just click Next. So in the background, Moodle will now go through and create all of the database tables. And once that's ready, we can then go in and see what happens next. Okay, so it's come up with the installation screen, which is fantastic because it means everything's gone fine and it's ready to go. It just asks you to confirm that you understand what it stands for, what the licensing is, and we can go continue. Now, one of the other requirements you'll notice was down here, max input vars needs to be 5,000. So we need to go in and fix that. Otherwise, we can't continue with the install. Everything else seems to be there. So sodium was one that was mentioned, but sodium is already there because it's automatically already enabled in MAMP Pro. So we're right to go ahead with that one. Let's fix up this max input vars. We'll jump back to MAMP Pro. In MAMP Pro, we need to go to settings and you'll see we've got general here. The language is the one we want. We're looking for default version, which is in, this is in PHP. 8.2.26 is the version we're actually using here, is it? Yes, there it is there. So we just go open template beside that and just say okay to that. We just need to find max input bars. There it is. So it's worth a thousand at the moment. We need 5,000 for that and we'll save it and close. Close that up, and I'm not sure if I have to restart or not, but let's just do a check and see if it, it may pick it up straight away. Which it did. I didn't have to restart the server. Perfect. So everything else is all living in there happily. Let's go continue. Moodle then just does a quick plugins check to make sure it has all the latest versions and make sure the plugins are correct for this build. Then we just go upgrade Moodle database now, and all of those plugins will be installed. Then everything should be right which is good. All those plugins are all installed. We'll go continue. If you're worried that it takes a little while to load things sometimes, that's okay. Don't panic. Just let it go. Let it run. If there's any issues with it and it crashes or anything, just restart uh, your server. So you can go and restart Mount Pro and then um, install again. So here we go. Got our username, admin. I think it's good to change that to something else, but for this demo, I'll leave it exactly how it is. We'll need to put a password in there because this is the admin user account. So I'll put one of those in. I'll need to put my email address in as well. So I'll put that in and choose a few other settings. And that's all we need to do. And then update profile. Just make sure you remember that password because it is the admin username and password. Don't forget it. Otherwise, you'll get locked out. Uh, we're just going to call this Moodle 5.0 for the site name. So I remember which one it is because I've got quite a few. M50 and the default time zone. Well, I'm actually in Australia, so we're going to change that to Australia in Brisbane. We do need to have an email address in here, so I'll just put mine in there for now. And save changes. You do need to support email as well, so I'll put mine in there for that. That's it. It's up and running. Got it. And it looks very similar to Moodle 4. Point something because we're using the Boost theme. So that part's okay. So there's one last final sort of pretty major thing that we need to do, and that is to set up the cron tasks for Moodle. Now, if you're wondering what the heck cron actually means or what it is. It's just tasks that happen in the background that keep the whole system running. So if you want to have a look at what that is first, if we go into site administration, go to tasks, down to scheduled tasks, you can see here these are the list of all of the tasks that happen in the background. It then shows you when that was last run, when it will next be run, that task, and then how often that is going to be run. So you know, every four minutes or every seven hours and four minutes, uh, if you know we went down to a task down here somewhere, like uh, synchronized self-enrollment tasks, well, it was probably not a good example. Well, here we go, background processing for assignment module. Uh, that may be checking to see what's happening with assignments, whether they're due, whether it needs to update any information to do with assignments. That happens uh, basically every minute. It just, every day, every, every minute of every day of every hour, it runs through and does that 
quick check to see if a student's just submitted an assignment or what they've done and then processes all the, the things that happen in the background. So we need to make sure that's running. Now you'll notice now that the last time that was run was Friday the 2nd of May at 11.35 a.m. Now that means that the cron was running. I've actually turned the cron off at the moment so I can show you how to set that back up. So let's go through that process. First of all, we need to find out, uh, we need to change one setting in the cron. So if we just type in cron, we need to set a path to the PHP CLI. So that means we need to go to, uh, we need to tell the system where to go to actually run this task in the background uh, automatically. Let's jump back to MAMP Pro in here and we just need to find our PHP settings. So we go to our PHP version 8.2 point, whatever that is, uh, click on here. And you can see here, it's telling us where MAMP actually lives. You can see here, it lives in applications bin PHP. So that's where our PHP is sitting. Uh, the configuration file happens to be in there. But all we need to do is grab that first part of that, leave the conf off the end, go back to our Moodle and paste that in. And then the last bit is we just need to add on this bin slash PHP onto the end of that. It looks like that, which is that one there. That's all we need to do. We click save changes and provided after we save changes, there's a little tick there. That means it did find it and everything's okay. Now that's not the complete process for the cron. All that's done is tell the system that it knows where to go to do this, but we need to automate this and make it actually happen. That is a little bit more complicated. So we're on a Mac. So we need to open up our terminal and here's our terminal just here. We need to go to a thing called cron tab. So we type in cron tab space dash E and press enter and in here is where we need to put some information into our cron tab. Press I for editing, put those in. So this is the, the part that shows it every minute. So we're telling it to run this cron task that will then go and run all of those tasks in order. Put that in first, that's our first bit. And then we need to go and put that um, part that we had back in over here, this bit here, we need to put this bit in next. So that goes in and then the last bit is we need to tell it where to actually run that file. So we need to know where PHP lives. Uh, sorry, we need to know where the server files live that we need to run. So at the moment we're just saying this is where PHP lives. We need the other bit as well. So this is the second, this is the second part of it. To do this, we go back to MAMP Pro and we need to go here to where our site is. So this is our site address there. So we need that site folder. And then after that, we put in another slash and we put in admin slash CLI slash cron.php. So as I said, this part is the most complicated bit. So all we're doing here is setting up a background task that will run the cron, or the CLI cron file, and that will then in turn activate all of those tasks that happen in the background. So once we've done that, we press escape colon WQ, which just write writes that file or saves it and then quits it. So we've done that and I'll just click allow uh, so that the can actually save that file using the admin account. And then we jump back to our Moodle. We go to tasks again, go into our scheduled tasks. And you'll see here that the last time that this was run was, let's choose one that actually happened just now. 1202, one that has to run every minute which here we go, that one there, background background processing for assignment module. It says that had to be run uh, at 12.02 and the next run will be 12.03. So without clicking run now, because we don't need to, we don't want to run it manually, we want it to happen automatically. We just wait for that to tick over to the next 12.03. Now what you may have to do, and it's worth doing anyway, jump back to Mount Pro and just stop and start the server again. Yeah, I'm not sure whether you actually needed to do that or not. I do that anyway, just to make myself feel better. And go back to our scheduled tasks and run it again, or reopen the page. Should say not actually run it. And let's jump to our task we were just looking at, which is this one here. And it now says Friday 12, 2nd of May 1203 uh, was the last time it was run which is correct. And then the next one will be 1204. And obviously if we wait a minute, because this one's running every minute of every hour of every day, uh, if we refresh it again in a minute, it should go from 1203 to 1204 to 1204, 1205.
which it has done. It's now 12.04 and 12.05. So that means the cron is running in the background exactly how we wanted it. That was the last thing we had to do, the last major thing we had to do. Now you can get on with actually using the platform, adding all your students, doing all the other things that you need to do, adding other plugins if you need to. Hopefully that's been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please let me know. But that was the most complex part, that last bit of just getting that cron running. And now your Moodle site will work nearly flawlessly. I'll talk to you again very soon.